Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to have a very special recipe too. I know every recipe is special. Um, first of all, happy Ramadan to all my Muslim friends uh, celebrating this, um, this uh, particular event. And first of all, I know it's not the best of times to be celebrating it. I know social distancing and Corona. But again, please connect with your family through Facebook. This um, month should be a message of forgiveness, peace, and love. So yes, enjoy yourself. So while you're stuck at quarantine, I've come up with another very simple recipe of usually something that's that tends to get blown out of proportion and tends to get overcomplicated. And that is a simple, authentic South Indian fish curry. <music> Fish curry in India, um, again, is, is eaten predominantly, you know, in, in the coastal areas, yes. And one of the biggest aversion that people have to seafood is this weird smell, okay. Um, yes, there is sometimes a fishy smell, the seafood smell to fish. And if you're not a fan of it, one way, here's a tip to get rid of it. When you get fish, first of all, make sure it's fresh and it's not frozen for days on end. Second, um, you add some vinegar, turmeric, and salt, rock salt, marinate it for 10 minutes and wash it off. Key words, wash it off, you can add lime juice as well, but vinegar is preferred. Now, why does fish smell? It's very simple. There's certain uh, bacteria that are present in the ocean that are stuck to the flesh of the fish that give out that smell. The first thing is, the type of fish that you choose for your recipe is very critical. Uh, you can choose bone in, but I personally prefer bone less. So what I have is beautiful, tender and flesh, fresh tilapia fillets. And when this cooks, it'll come out like a chunk of coconut. You know, that's the thing. Don't get fish that is so delicate that it disintegrates into the uh, whole curry while you're making it, okay? And there are a few tips and tricks, again, um, that I can um, tell you to keep your fish cold and get it to absorb all the flavors, okay? Uh, this particular recipe is simple but has three steps. Number one, uh, choosing very good fish, no smell whatsoever. Second, marinating the fish, then making the masala powder and finally the curry, okay? Here we have a bit over a pound of fish, okay, neatly cut up into pieces, okay. Now, first step for the marinade, I have ginger garlic paste, okay, and the star of the show, coconut oil, yes. Um, in India, please try not to use parachute, use cooking coconut oil, lime juice, uh, right here, okay. Um, the bottle's almost empty, so it's basically about um, three to four teaspoons and the powdered spices. Now here we have salt, turmeric, a pinch of garam masala, a little bit of chili powder and a little bit of coriander powder. Now here's the main fish masala ingredient that I'm going to dry roast. I have some special chilies now. These are different red chilies. These are tiny around. These are called the cherry bomb peppers that are dry. Um, these have an extra sweetness that they add um, when you actually dry roast them, okay? Along with that, since I am South Indian, uh, there is dried um, desiccated coconut, one bay leaf, a few black peppercorns, um, cumin seeds, and um, cardamom seeds, or also known as elaichi. Next, for the main curry base, we have one large onion that is thinly sliced, along with a cup of uh, you know, grated tomato or tomato puree. Now, here's a special trick for you. Sometimes, if you don't have the time or the patience to grate your um, tomatoes, this is my hack. Get a very good quality pasta sauce and use it. Because pasta sauce has all the elements. Uh, like the, the one I got is simple, just tomatoes that are cooked along with a little bit of onion. That's the pasta sauce that I, I, I use sometimes. That's a hack. If you don't have the time to cut your tomatoes, it's a very quick thing and it'll turn out delicious. Number one, marinate the fish. I'm going to add, first things first, you will see this is not a large quantity. It's about, like I said, a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. There you go. Now, traditionally in South India, we also use curry leaves, but thanks to COVID, we are experiencing a curry leaf shortage here. I've looked about six or eight stores. I have not been able to get it. So you can do this without that as well. That's an optional ingredient, okay? Um, it's great flavor, but anyways, um, the other South Indian thing we're doing is add, using a lot of coconut base for this. So after the lime juice, um, please add some fresh ginger garlic paste. If you can now, since it's quarantine, another uh, suggestion for you, get a whole bunch of garlic, peel it, ginger, peel it, okay? 
um, and simply have equal parts. Take a tiny weighing machine and if you have about let's say 500 grams of ginger, have 500 grams of garlic um, and actually blend them and make your own paste and keep it. It's an annoying but a fun family activity. Everybody can sit around the table, peel ginger here, there you go, there's something else that you can do. Also, you can make fresh green chili paste and keep that in, in jars and store them because the shelf life of ginger garlic paste, one thing though, add a, add a pinch of turmeric and some lemon juice for preservation can stay about three to six months. Trust me, we used to do that. I don't have any, any time anymore. So um, that's another activity for you. So coming back to the marinade. So ginger garlic paste, along with that, my five powdered spices along with salt. You see this, there's a pinch of salt. So add all of those. Okay, once you have added about all of those, thoroughly mix them and set them aside for about, about 15 uh, to 20 minutes. And this does not really require like a lengthy marination. The reason is, while this is marinating here, what I'm gonna do is toast up my spices, get them to release the oils and make a masala powder out of them. And then we can go straight into making the curry. So I have the wok here. It's ready. It's on a beautiful uh, high flame for a bit to heat it up. And then I'm going to turn it to a medium and simply straight, no oil, nothing. Add all my dry masalas and we're going to gently saute them until they release their flavors or until the coconut starts to turn a beautiful nutty brown. Uh, when the coconut, dry coconut, again, we can add fresh coconut if you want. There's so many options here. Um, Fennel seeds are another beautiful flavor for pal, but I'll do a separate um, curry with a completely authentic South Indian twist on it. Mustard seeds can also be added, but I'm doing a very simplistic, um, you know, version. So I'm now going to saute this on medium flame until the coconut changes color. The chilies start to give out oil, so it's going to be really fragrant. And um, the coconut also becomes very fragrant. Um, so in about a couple of minutes, you will see this turn golden brown. As you can see, the uh, coconut is now toasted neatly and it's a beautiful golden brown. But don't overdo the coconut. It, if not, it gives like a bitter aftertaste to your curry. You don't want that. The chilies, you can see this. There's a little bit of oil coming out of the chilies. You should see that? Just gently, there's a little bit of oil. So that's the fragrant chili oil that's being released. After this uh, toasting is done, leave this to cool. Then we can powder it. Don't put anything in a hot, hot, hot mixer. So just let it cool for a few uh, for a few minutes. Second step to, to the same pan, uh, what I would do is add a couple of spoons of coconut oil. So one, and then two, see this? This is a good, um, let it melt. What I'm now trying to do is kind of caramelize the outside of the fish so it can absorb the masala and doesn't uh, disintegrate. So I'm just gonna gently shallow fry them and then keep them aside and then put them back into the curry. That's a very important step. Don't skip it, you can thank me later. The uh, oil that's on medium high, add the fish pieces slowly. And then uh, there you go. Gently let them fry up for a bit. If your pan is not big, I suggest do this in batches. My pan isn't too big, so I'm doing it in two batches. So just to, just for a few minutes. You don't have to cook the fish all the way through because the fish will get cooked later in the uh, curry. So you see how the fish covers the entire pan, but it's not overcrowded. Now leave them be for about two minutes each side and then take them out. So I'm now slowly taking the fish out after a couple of seconds. Some people let it fry until it becomes hard and until it completely changes color. It's not my personal preference. I'm just gonna take that out because I have a second batch of fish to fry. It's kind of hardens it up, you know. And also the fish releases a lot of flavor into the oil. And we're gonna use this oil throughout for the curry. We're not gonna add anything extra. No oil or anything extra will be added to this. Okay, now I'm gonna put the second batch of the fish. There you go, second batch, leave it be for a few minutes and same, repeat the process. While the fish is kind of frying up there, I this has now cooled uh, to room temperature, plus we have the AC on, so I'm gently gonna, I don't want to use a spoon because if I do and I don't do this properly, this whole mixture will go all over the place and the counter is gonna get messy. So you see this, I'm gonna grind this into a powder.
So you see that? <laughs> this masala smells amazing. <laughs> and one final. See that? Smoke coming out of it and that's your fish masala. So the other batch I've let it fry a little longer and you see the caramelization around compared to this to the other. You could fry it that long as well. This is completely personal preference. If people crisp it up, uh, feel free to do what you think is right. Now, a quick note about adding sour elements in, the, in fish and seafood. There are a few things that are used to bring about sourness in food. Lime juice is one, tomatoes is one, yogurt is one, and finally tamarind is one. Usually the rule is, I personally don't like to use too much yogurt with seafood. It's a personal preference, it's something I grew up with. That does not mean I'm right. Um, I personally prefer to use tomato and tamarind. Uh, if the sourness with the tomato is not enough, I will use, and, and, the, and the lemon juice that I've had, I might add in a little tamarind as a secret at the end. But we'll see as the curry, uh, as the fish curry progresses, what we're gonna do. Now, quickly coming back in, in the same oil that the fish was fried, okay? Um, simply take it out and add your onion. There you go. See that? In the same oil where the fish has released all its fragrances and its juice, you add onions. Now you let these onions kind of get into like a golden brown level right on the stove. So I'm gonna just let the onions fry out. Now if you want, you can add a little bit of salt to bring out the um, water in the onions and you can watch, it's just a tiny pinch. And I'm adding, you see that? Barely um, half, a, half a teaspoon. If we're just gonna add that. And I'm gonna let this saute for about a good six, seven minutes until it softens up. So the onions have now turned a bit more than translucent. There's a little bit of color on the edges. I know it's a little difficult to see with the turmeric and with this previous masala. If the masala burns a little bit, that's okay. Some caramelization. Now when this is happening, I'm gonna take and add the powdered customized masala with the grated coconut that I made right here, okay, to this. I'm gonna let this saute for about 30 seconds or, or a minute before I add the tomato. There you go, Let's see that? Mix this up with the onion. And now they're starting to release their oil. It smells very, very good. To this, I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Can you see that? Simply add tomatoes and let this kind of absorb the flavors and be sauteed for a little bit. Okay. Once I think the moisture goes down, I will add some water to it. So I'm gonna ni ni nicely mix it. Make sure mixing is key. Keep mixing, keep mixing. Okay. Make sure the masala gets ni nicely incorporated with the tomato. Yeah, the fragrance uh, smells really, really good. And to this, I'm going to add a little bit of water. There you go. Right, once the curry has come to this, I will now take and add all the fish that I've fried and slowly let it absorb the masala and then let it uh, you know, simmer for a good 15 uh, minutes and then amazing tasty fish curry will be done. Now the curry has simmered and I'm going to take a few sprigs of coriander and neatly garnish it. And that would be the fish curry ready to be plated. You enjoy it with some paratha or some hot rice, up to you. Spice levels are also up to you.